The St. Louis Cardinals have made a trade and acquired another left-handed relief pitcher to add to their bullpen competition. But again, it seems like more low-hanging fruit than a difference-making move. Plus, I've got one of the more wild-looking trade possibilities I've seen all offseason to share with you today on Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio. Follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, whether it's on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube. Like and subscribe and comment so you can interact with us. Hit the notification button so you know when new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, this will be the last week of the off season for the podcast. Starting up on Monday, we go to five days a week, Monday through Friday. So for those of you who've been uh, asking, how come we're not getting as many episodes anymore? It's just because this has been our off season and now uh, spring training is coming up. So we'll get back into the full swing of things here real, real soon. But the MLB off season in real life continues. And as we continue to move closer to the pitchers and catchers reporting next week, teams will begin to start plucking lower level free agents off of the market. And you might even see some small level trades between squads. And that's exactly what we got today from the St. Louis Cardinals and the Kansas city Royals. Now hold on to your butts. This is, this one's a doozy guys get ready for it. The St. Louis Cardinals have acquired veteran left-handed relief pitcher, Anthony Misevich in exchange for cash considerations and to make room on the 40-man roster, they have designated right-handed relief pitcher James Nail for assignment. Now, the bummer part about this particular deal, okay, is for Nail, and I feel bad for him here because, first off, obviously, losing your spot on the 40-man roster is uh, not a great experience for anyone involved, you know? That's, uh, that's a bummer. But it just so happens that today... February the 8th is also James Nail's birthday. He turns 30 years old today. Talk about a kick in the beanbag, man, on your birthday to be designated for assignment. And uh, I saw on Twitter today that the Post Dispatch is uh, Derek Gould said on Twitter that uh, Nail was at the facility this morning signing autographs for fans, talking about the winter that he just had, how he was working on his breaking ball and adding velocity. Ouch. Ouch. Right. Um, doesn't necessarily mean James Nail's career with the Cardinals is over. He could get designated for assignment. Nobody wants to trade for him. Nobody claims him or anything. And then he just goes down to AAA. And, uh, you know, we see what happens after that. But the big move here is not the demotion of James Nail. It's the fact that the Cardinals went and got Anthony Masevich. Now, I know what you're thinking. You want to grab that bottle of champagne and... Pop that sucker open already, right? Bring it home a championship. <laughs> but it was a deal. I mean, at least they made a deal, right? That a lot of people have been whining that the Cardinals have been so quiet. So there you go. You got a deal. But I'm guessing that the Miz doesn't exactly do it for you. Getting him, does it? Um, before we pass judgment on him, how about, you know, because odds are you don't know who he is. And I'll be honest, I didn't know much about him either. So I've done the research for you. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at who this guy is and what he has to offer. Now, Masevich is 28 years old. He's out of Michigan, played at Michigan State, listed at 6'1", 196, 18th round selection by the Seattle Mariners in 2015, uh, was a starter early on in his career in the Mariners farm system. 2015, he makes 18 appearances at Michigan State. Eight of those are starts. He goes five and four. His ERA, 3.80. Whip 1.194, strikeouts per nine, 7.6. So nothing flashy there, but 
left-handers will get drafted. Left-handers, they will find a place for you if you could throw the ball left-handed. That's what I'm telling all of my friends who have kids. Teach them how to throw left-handed, man. Just, just do it. It could pay off one day. They could be a major leaguer. Or if you want to turn them into a, a football player, turn them into a punter. I've been telling them that too. They hardly ever get hurt. Um, so anyway, moving on. He gets drafted, uh, goes to low A ball, makes 14 appearances. Seven of those are starts. Three and two, ERA 2.14. His whip, 0 0.863 strikeouts per nine, 7.8. So not too shabby. 2016, again, he's a, he's a starter at this point in his career. 29 starts at high A. Goes seven and 10. His ERA at 4.79. Whip, 1.351. Strikeouts per nine, 6.6. .6. So we got a lot of regression there. 2017. He goes to two levels. He's at A, he's at double A. 28 starts, he goes 11 and 6. ERA, though, 4.51. The whip at 1.293. Strikeouts per nine, though, goes up a little bit, 8.6. Now, during this season, he gets traded from the Mariners to the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, and this trade included a few guys. Uh, it was Masevich, and then it was Luis Renifo, who just had a, a solid year with the Angels, by the way, in case you aren't keeping track at home. He's a 25-year-old. I believe he's an infielder. Uh, they also traded a player to be named later to the Rays for catcher Mike Marjama and pitcher Ryan Garten. So not, you know, a lot of future Hall of Famers involved there. Following that, he goes back to Seattle in a deal for an international signing bonus slot. 2018, 21 starts at double A. He goes three and 12. The ERA is 5.51. Not a good year. 2019, he's at double A and triple A. He makes seven starts at double A. Goes one and two. ERA, though, respectable. 2.52 strikeouts per nine. Jumps to 9.1. They move him up to triple A. And he makes 19 appearances. 17 of those are starts. He goes eight and six. But the ERA, over five again. 5.36. 2020, we've got the COVID year. He cracks the big league roster. Makes 21 appearances. But all of those are in relief. He goes 0-2, the ERA at 4.05, his whip at 1.300. Strikeouts per nine, though, 11.3. That's a career high. That's really, really good. You like that. 2021, he makes a career high 66 appearances out of the pen for uh, the Mariners. He goes 5-5, five and five, his ERA at 4.61, whip 1.39. And strikeouts per nine, though, that dips a little bit, goes back down to 8.7. Now, Last season, he's with Seattle until July. Then he gets DFA'd and is then purchased by the Kansas City Royals on August the 1st. With the Mariners, he made 17 appearances. He goes 0-1, ERA 4.61, the whip up to 1.463. His dragouts per nine had plummeted. He goes down to 5.3. But with Kansas City, he manages to improve a bit. He has 15 appearances. He goes one and one. The ERA at 4.11, but the whip back down to 1.109. His strikeouts per nine, way up, back to a whopping 11.2. Now, here's where he loses his job. The Royals bring back Zach Greinke. They just did that. And uh, they ended up designating Masevich, which is how the Cardinals were able to acquire him. So that's the background on this guy. And in case you're wondering what he looks like for my YouTube viewers, there's his, there's his face. I don't know where it now it looks like he's actually behind the microphone. I don't know where the black portion of this photo went, but now it looks like the newest Cardinal left-hander is actually behind the microphone. Okay. Anyway, but that's what he looks like. All right. Ms. Savage. How does this gentleman fit into the Cardinals bullpen competition moving forward here in 2023 and why oh why does this feel like another Cardinals being cheap move we'll get into it next on Locked on Cardinals uh FanDuel man are they busy right now this year the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel America's number one sports book of course we're really 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 excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they are the number one sports book in America. It's FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better because uh, they're very, very easy to navigate through to figure out how to get things done. A lot of great features, which makes the, the betting on sports fun and easy. Now, you can download FanDuel now, and you get an amazing opportunity here. The Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet, okay? You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So that's what we all worry about. You make your first bet, you lose. You're like, ah, pfft, I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. Well, if that happens to you, they're going to help you out. 
up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if that first bet doesn't come through for you. And FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. Eagles still favored by one and a half, but you don't have to just bet on who wins this game. You can bet on all sorts of things like the MVP. Uh, most of the time, it's the quarterback. That's, you know, odds are that's what's going to happen. So obviously, both Hurts and Mahomes have the best odds of winning it. You know, they're at plus 130. You've got Travis Kelsey at uh, plus 1600. A.J. Brown, wide receiver for the Eagles, plus 1800. Uh, how about the defensive players? Hassan Reddick for the Eagles, 3,400. Chris Jones for the Chiefs, plus 5,000. Just had a huge game against the Bengals in the AFC Championship game and so forth. So you can go through all these guys. Uh, FanDuel also has a ton of game special bets as well, like receiving or rushing yards and a half by certain players who's scoring touchdowns, how many points the teams will combine for. All sorts of stuff. And if you haven't downloaded it already, the FanDuel Sportsbook app, it's safe, it's secure, and it's super easy to use. So I, I, I recommend it. Best of all, you get your winnings paid instantly, right? Nobody likes to sit around and wait like, we'll get it to you within 48 hours. No, oh, man, I want, I want it now. It's the kind of world we live in. I want it now. And that's what they do. Winnings paid instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. Be sure to check out Locked on MLB Prospects as well. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Now the phrase low-hanging fruit. Been synonymous with Cardinals fans over the years, ever since President of Baseball Operations John Moselock used the phrase when describing the team's offseason spending way back in 2009. Remember, I don't even remember who it was he was talking about that he wanted to, to pick up and you know, we're gonna get some low hanging fruit. And we will never let that die, will we? We never will. We use it all the time. Um, and it's because of deals like this. I mean, come on, this is why we we bring it up every season out, out on the market right now. Right now, you have guys who are legit left-handed options that are very, very good at the major league level, have track records, have proven it. And we've discussed them repeatedly here on this podcast. We've got uh, Andrew Chafin. Here's the, no, nope, that's uh, Miskevich. Hold on. There's Chafin. There's Chafin stuff. Look how good he is. We got Matt Moore. Again, analytics show that he's incredible. Fantastic. You've got uh, Will Smith, who's still available. They've all had success at the MLB level legit success like not just like little flash in the pans here and there will smith had 37 saves in 2021 chafin had a 10.5 strikeouts per nine last year and in his career he's at 9.5 uh matt moore i get it just made the switch to the bolt pin full-time last year but he made 63 appearances his era was under two his strikeouts per nine at 10.1 and righties only hit 165 against him so he can get both lefties and righties out. But no, let's see if we can catch lightning in a bottle and bring in Anthony Masevich, who is so good. He's been DFA'd twice in two years by the Mariners and the Royals. So here's Masevich's analytics. He's got a curveball in the 90th percentile. That's it. <laughs> That's it. There's nothing else all that exciting about it. I, don't, I just don't understand it. I don't understand if it's because they have PSD or PTSD, I mean, from uh, the ill-fated Brett Cecil signing back in 2017. The Andrew Miller signing was better, but not great. But I blame the Cardinals there because Miller had already showed plenty of regression that previous year in Cleveland. I just, I can't, I can't wrap my head around it, guys. This bullpen as it stands right now from the left side, you've got Hennessy Cabrera, who imploded last year. Like, we all know what happened. <laughs> he just, you know, it didn't work out. Got sent down to Memphis, never came back. Uh, you're hoping he has his head straight on straight again this year, right? Like, you're hoping for good things. He's ready to roll into the season. JoJo Romero, who you got for Edmundo Sosa. 
last year. He was okay, but nothing special. And I'm pretty sure he was in the minor leagues for Philadelphia when you made that deal. Uh, Packy Naughton, fantastic NASCAR name, right? His ERA plus last year was 81. League average is 100. He was 81. That's not good. And then the one bright spot that I'm excited about this year moving forward, Zach Thompson. Rookie last year, but looked really, really good when he was brought up. And I I hope he's used more this season. I really do. Um, Obviously, Thompson also has the possibility of one day going into the rotation. Now, if Cabrera and Thompson do their thing, then awesome. You know, you got two really good guys. But how about if you have them two who you're kind of banking on, and then you have like a stud, all right? You got a Chafin. You got a Moore. You got a Will Smith to go with those two. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? And let's say, like I said, one of those guys falters or Thompson has to go into the rotation. All right. Say that happens. You're not stuck praying that one of these other guys that's left over, the crap left over, are going to be useful. You know, you're not in that pinch anymore. But that's just me. That's just me. I, you know, you got the funds. It's a small but major investment at the same time into an important area of your team. That has a lot of question marks. Like I, I'm kind of done talking about the offense, worrying about the offense. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's going to be the issue this year. I'm, it's the staff, it's the rotation, it's the the bullpen that you have guys that are sitting there that you could sign that would really kind of be some glue and make this a lot easier on people. Less question marks, but they're not doing it. I mean, you're going to throw out the grouping of Romero, Naughton, and Misevich. That's what you're going to do? And you're going to shuffle them back and forth between Memphis and St. Louis for the first few months and see who sticks? That's the game plan? I just, I I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm I'm not excited about that whatsoever. Now, maybe he pans out. Maybe Misevich pans out and he ends up being okay. But odds are that he's not. Like, there's no, it's not, it's it's closer that he won't pan out than it is for certain that he'll pan out, right? But anyway, that's the guy you got. Misevich coming to the Cardinals this year. Get ready. <laughs> Going to sell a lot of, a lot of jerseys, the Misevich jerseys. Anyway, saw an absolutely wild trade uh, scenario online yesterday, and it was for a guy that I've actually wanted the Cardinals to go after. Like, I really want this dude on this team. But this is, this one's wild. And I'll share it with you next on Locked on Cardinals. Bleacher Report put out an article called Fresh Trade Packages for MLB's Top Rumored Targets. And in it, they put together different trades for teams around the league. And uh, some decent names involved here. They had the Padres moving shortstop, Hassan Kim to the Braves, Max Kepler from the Twins to the Red Sox, uh, the Rockies, Brennan Rogers to the White Sox, the Angels getting Jorge Mateo from the Orioles, uh, the Yankees, Glabar Torres to the Brewers. And then uh, they, they wrapped it up. Their big one was Brian Reynolds, going from the Pirates to the Dodgers. Now, most of the, the these deals were okay, all right? Um, nothing, like, nothing like so outrageous where it made me do a double take or anything like that. Uh, you know, the the Brian Reynolds to the Dodgers, they had them moving a couple big pieces to do that. And I was like, eh, I don't know if the Dodgers are going to do that. But the one that stood out to me, obviously, is they brought up a deal uh, between the Cardinals and the Marlins. And my reaction was jaw to the floor. <laughs> that was my reaction when I read this. I was like, hold on, this has got to be a misprint, right? So here's the deal. The St. Louis Cardinals will get right-handed pitcher Edward Cabrera, a guy that I have banged the drum for and thought when they were talking about Pablo Lopez trades, and I was like, stop looking at him. Look at somebody else like Edward Cabrera. That's a guy I would be interested in. In return for Edward Cabrera going to the Cardinals, the Miami Marlins would get left fielder, Tyler O'Neill, shortstop Paul DeYoung, another outfielder Alec Burleson. Now here's where things get a little crazy. 
shortstop prospect Mason Wen, and right-handed pitching prospect Gordon Graceffo. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you serious right now? Uh, now I, again, I love me some Edward Cabrera. I dig him, but whoa. Hey, now. Hey, now. That's the kind of package, okay? You put all those guys together in a deal, I expect to see it for someone like Shane Bieber from Cleveland, all right? Not Edward Cabrera. Not a dude that only has 21 appearances at the major league level. Now, if you want to say uh, Burleson, DeYoung, Graceffo for Cabrera. All right. I can buy into that one, maybe. O'Neal, DeYoung, Graceffo. Okay. Mason Wynn and O'Neal together. Oh, that's a lot, but still. Okay. But all of those guys together, stop it. Stop it. Uh, their write-up said this, by the way. In Cabrera, the Cardinals would get a pitcher with six more years of club control and, as denoted by electric stuff and results that included a 3.01 ERA in 14 major league starts in 2022, huge upside. The rotation needs a guy like that, especially with four members of it ticketed for free agency this coming winter. It's indeed quite a leap to assume the Marlins would trade another starter even after moving Lopez. And then there's the question of whether St. Louis would make this trade. Cabrera is certainly talented, but he hasn't proven to have the kind of durability the Cardinals need to paper over the age-related question mark attached to Adam Wainwright and the injury-related ones attached to Jack Flaherty and Steven Matz. So I went to baseballtradevalues.com, which is what we use. And you can, if you don't put stock into this website, then that's fine. But for entertainment purposes, we use it here. Okay. And these are the values of what that trade would look like. So as you can see here, Alec Burleson, 11.4. Gordon Graceffo, he's at 15. Tyler O'Neill is a 31.2 trade value. Mason Wynn is at 25.5. And then you've got Paul DeYoung who brings him down because he's not worth much. In fact, he's negative, negative 7.1. So a total value of 76. And then you go over to uh, Edward Cabrera, you put him in, and he is worth 14.8. I mean, stop it. <laughs> stop it. That is, I mean, I'm surprised that if I actually clicked evaluate this trade on that website, it would probably laugh at me and then log me out because that's how ridiculous this particular trade is. I love Cabrera. I do. He's filthy. And if the Marlins feel the need to move him for more offense, then I'm in. I, I would engage in talks with him and I, I would keep that ball rolling. They've got uh, a great prospect in Yuri Perez coming up uh, to go along with Sandy Alcantara, Rogers, Lazardo, Johnny Cueto. That's their rotation this year. Uh, they've also got two guys who have been injured that are prospects and two of their top prospects, uh, Max Meyer and Sixto Sanchez, who they have uh, a lot of faith in but they've been injured. So they, they're kind of waiting on those guys. But five guys without getting something more back in return than Jess Cabrera seems a little excessive. But what are your thoughts on this deal? Let me know in the comments section uh, down below on our YouTube page, or you can hit me up on Twitter uh, and let me know what your thoughts are on that one as well. Obviously, I want to hear your thoughts on what you think about the, uh, the trade and uh, getting Anthony Miskevich. Is that how I can see? I keep changing the way I say his name because I'm just not that familiar with him yet. Misevich. That's how you say it. Left handed relief pitcher Anthony Misevich. Okay. What do you guys think about that? Are you in agreement with me uh, about another low hanging fruit and you're tired of hearing about this stuff? Or is this something that you're like, yeah, you know, it brings competition and, you know, maybe he becomes useful. Maybe you have a little faith in him. I would like to hear from you. So you guys let me know, comment section down below. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked on MLB Prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Tomorrow's show, we're going to be talking about um, the, the World Baseball Classic. You know, that's coming up. Uh, they're going to be announcing the uh, full rosters 
Uh, they're going to do that tomorrow now, Thursday night, tomorrow night, if uh, according to this recording on the 8th. So uh, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. We appreciate all our new subscribers and our new followers and everything on Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals and, of course, at JD Sports Radio as well. Appreciate all of you. You're the best fans of baseball for a reason, and I'll see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.